Hi guys, hope everyone is doing well and enjoying their weekend. Thank you for the comments on last Sunday's video. Um, it's great to have that interaction and I look forward to the same this week. I thought we'd start the video today and going forward actually, uh, by just having a look how we finished the last week uh, going into the new one. So as last, uh, last video, last week's video uh, finished, I've, I've left those same lines on, on the chart, so feel free to, to go back. And, and this is something I, I quite like to do, is to you know test my analysis, see how the levels I put on, did they get respected, did they not, was there a reason for that? Um, and then take them all off and we'll do that, take all the levels off and the markings off and, and we'll, we'll start again. So we've got the Euro here, um, obviously it looks relatively messy now with all these lines, but you know, it's, it's, it's helped me, you know, over the years just to be aware of those key levels. So, you know, I'm going to, we're going to keep doing this. Um, you can see last week, what was the, the, the Monday the 25th, but of course that was a bank holiday in the States and also the, uh, well, the UK. Um, but you can see here we pushed off, obviously that the failure to close back below that 109 you can see this rectangular area was was pretty key um, and we we didn't close there we pushed on we then came to that top of that range the close above there was was pretty key but it was also the close above the 200 day moving average we came back to test that level the 110 handle on futures before pushing up to really the next area of resistance so it's good to see you know even on the daily chart this these levels so well respected how we finished uh, on on Friday or the week uh, was obviously pretty key and also the month uh, when we come to our charts tomorrow of course we were going to be on the 1st of June so worth having a look at the monthly charts here as well and we will do that uh, briefly uh, but yeah you can see here the close above here relatively significant um, above the, the the highest level we sort of have marked on before we're looking really to the 112 handle uh, quick look at the pounds yeah, so here I was saying, you know, if we can get above that 122.65 uh, on a close, be looking for longs. Uh, we did get a close. It would have been a hairy one to, to hold, has to be said, uh, but that has led to this pushing higher. Uh, and, well, the way it, it finished on, on Friday, you know, I guess, yeah, a bit of resistance on, on this level here, which we could have had, have marked up. But, you know, up towards 124.67 seems like it could be the next opportunity to, to book some profit on this trade if not already done so uh, and if it gets back below 122.65 likelihood is it's going to get a bit messy and, and drift lower we'll come back onto that later on uh, anyway trend line on the aussie held well uh, we also came up to test this massive massive level as we we know uh, on uh, on the futures uh, you know just highlighting how important that was last year and then the breakdown in February, and actually also, I haven't actually, or didn't put it on last Sunday, um, but if we just put this on quickly, and again, we'll go over this as we go through the Aussie shortly, we've got the 200 day moving average there as well. So a lot of resistance around here, uh, and the way we finished on Friday was right up at that top, finishing above the 200 day moving average for the first time since, 17th of January um, so it hasn't really been consistently above that uh, well, going back to December 2017 when it first started really pushing on so be significant to, to see how we unfold this week this coming week the S&P um, so here you can see we were talking about how we pushed up and if it came back to 2886 that would be a good opportunity to get long as what I was saying didn't quite happen but we pushed on took out the next target uh, we came back then to test our 29.95 level, we came back to test the 200 day moving average as support uh, and we finished on the high of the day uh, on Friday. So yeah, it, it seems like we can now, the way we finished anyway, drift towards 3100 there and, and the highs that we had back on 4th of March. Again, we'll come back to, to do that. Um, the, the NASDAQ, you can see I've got this area circled up. It came down to test it on the 27th, which would have been the Wednesday. Could have got in there, I guess. Um, and, you know, I think I was in the video, I was saying, unless it gets really below any of these levels, you can't really get excited about a long. It was very choppy, has to be said, last week. One, two, three, four, five days in a row. 
uh, and that's you know obviously not counting the the Monday, the bank holiday Monday, which the cash market did push higher. So five days in a row of, of gains for futures on the Nasdaq, and most importantly, the first close we've got above our level here, all time highs next week. That's what the chart's telling me anyway at this present moment. Nasdaq, uh, the, the Dow breaking above the the trend. We didn't quite get a retest of that level, so something to to look out for. Two hundred day moving average a bit above here. And I would have, well, well, we'll go through this shortly, but I'd have this area marked up, which we'll, we'll see. Uh, gold broke our, our trend line, we tested it perfectly, came back down to test uh, these these kind of lows here. Um, not actually quite sure why I've got uh, 1701.2 marked up, but it was the 1700 handle, and also you've got some lows in the mix here. However, we did then get above, we came back to retest this trend line. What a trade, and then back up to some other levels uh, where I've had marks up just these lows where you can see, I mean, very well respected here on gold, certainly. Um, having a look on the daily chart, we'll, we'll go through this in, in a bit more detail uh, shortly. Oil, um, as I say each week, I'll leave it to the pros. I feel we get to, to $40, fill the gap soon. Uh, we're almost testing the, the high of the 11th of March, and I don't think the sellers can get excited unless we get below 29.11. And uh, while that's a big range, you can see not much has really happened there uh, except the push above on Friday on some, well, risk on, shall we say. So let's revisit the euro. Um, what I would do is, as, and I would encourage everyone to do it, is just remove remove everything, start again, you know, get your, your resistance levels above where we're trading, just horizontally marking up these now. Um, and of course they can be zones, you don't have to get them absolutely perfect, it's just as long as you're aware of the levels that you know, you're know you talking about. Um, some people talking about next stop 115, I would not believe that for now. Uh, some very, very key levels for us to get through. Um, and also worth noting, it's a, a very, very heavy data week. You've got the Fed, you've got uh, non-farm payrolls, uh, and you know that's just a part of the, the data calendar. So there's going to be twists and turns. Yes, I think the focus is going to be U.S.-China related, um, and of course, you know, with the the riots we've seen in U.S., while I don't think that's big enough to to have an impact just yet. It could be worth keeping a, a, an eye on how that develops, and you know I'll be intrigued to see how, what Ant thinks in the the macro menu later, and also that first briefing uh, tomorrow. We've we've got the um, we've got the advanced and, and professional trader program starting tomorrow, uh, so what a week for for that with with all the data and everything that's going on. Um, great time to. To sort of be involved in the markets and see how that un that unfolds. But anyway, euro how it finished, like I said, is is bullish for me. Um, just looking the fact that we closed above our, our range uh, that had been holding price in really since the first of April. So we we got above that. Um, obviously, the bigger move to the downside. While people will be looking to sell higher up, obviously we got our trend line on here, and and that needs to go at some point for that really to materialized we didn't close below our, our level 109 so I'm still gonna have that on I'd be just looking at it at, at like this I mean if uh, with there's that saying you know don't catch a falling knife and you know the way I'm looking at euro obviously we, we come up to these resistance levels and they look good but I'd rather be late to the party here I'd rather you know sell and let's just get a little circle here I'd rather sell if we can come back below our Resistance, resistance, resistance. Okay, false break, and then we go lower. Or I'd sell below here, or you know, better sell below that trend line. That's how I'd be be looking for it. Can we push up and keep going on? Of course, you know, if we keep breaking these levels, then the momentum's to the upside. The all important level for me, one ten thirty one, and of course, uh, daily closes for for those points will will be key. Um, we're we're pretty mid range between the two next key levels. Uh, however, just how we finished on Friday, you, you, you imagine we can continue to push on, but it's uh, it's a new month, so obviously worth just having a, a look at that uh, on the month of uh, May. And when you look at the euro like this, you just think, oh God, we're just in a massive trend channel. You know, we've had a, and I'm just gonna get this on, just roughly get that on. 
you know, not, not much has happened when you look at it like that. Look, um, those false breaks down here, it's contained. You know, let's, let's, let's wait and see. But as, as we, we approach and, you know, come up to test the top end of this, uh, this trend channel, that could be the opportunity to get short again. We haven't really had, uh, well, we obviously had breaks, but we haven't had a confirmed break from outside this, this trend channel since, you know, going back to 2018 when it, when it started to form. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's obviously a massive area of support. And even if we do get lower, you know, you've got those... 2015 uh, and, and 17 lows to, to talk about. So Euro finished the month quite nicely, but in, in the grand scheme of things, you know, you know, when you're looking at a monthly chart, that this push higher makes sense, uh, dare I say. So have a look over at the pound. Uh, I, I, I think we get 126 if risk on continues. There's a couple of barriers to that. Uh, and of course, one of those being the US China stuff, which is starting to gather momentum. We were saying this last, last Sunday. You know my view on the S&P, I think we go higher. Then we have a big headline, China, uh, US, that brings us lower. That then proves to be a non-story as Trump backtracks and we go higher into the election. Pound at the moment is, is heavily uh, heavily influenced by risk, uh, risk on, risk off. So hopefully for the continuation of, of this view that the pound goes higher, that US, China, headline is, is, a, is a fair whack away uh, and of course there's a few hurdles this week with data so no harm in just taking a little backseat and trading this potentially more medium term with those you know looking daily closes for any influence for that shorter time frame but yeah I mean I, I would to be honest obviously I'd mark up let's just get rid of those uh, arrows I just have on this resistance level from the high of the, the 12 little false break okay looks bearish uh, 122.65 would be the area the bulls want to defend and, and bears get us below now but I pretty much would leave this would leave this the, the, the way I had it last Sunday so it wasn't the, the most crazy week for, for the pound let's have a, have a look at the 200 day moving average as we know in other currencies that's relatively useful um, to, to have on so yeah I, one test rejection two test rejection we interested to see what happens on that third. I think we get there. I don't think we're going to come back down to the 120s. Uh, I think that one will, will come soon. However, I am wrong in that view below 122.65 uh, as well. If we are to have a risk off week, get your trend line on from those lows. Absolutely, from the low of the year, get that on. Uh, nothing from the top as yet, not that great potential for there have to be one Friday but didn't didn't materialize uh, so yeah trend line from the lows there bigger move uh, to the downside will, would happen if, if that comes in uh, it'd also be a break below that magic 122.65 on the futures for now uh, we have got a battle between 124.67 uh, and 122.65 with that 123.83 a bit of a line in the sand uh, above 124.65 I expect a cleaner move up towards the 126.49 I don't think that could happen in a week but then again you know on the on the Tuesday the the pound moved from 121.65 up to 123.64 so 200 pips so it's not completely uh, against the law of physics shall we say Aussie uh, trend line I'm leaving uh, the these this area of, uh, of support above and below the trend line I'm having on as well along with this new one from, uh, call it a bit of a double bottom, really, from the, the 22nd, uh, a couple of Fridays ago, and uh, Tuesday there. Trend line starting to appear from those lows, albeit very steep. The levels of support I would look to keep on. How we closed is good for the bulls, but you would want you'd want something more significant here to to believe that we we can push on. So I, I think it's still a bit. Uh, no man landish up here. I, I I wouldn't blame people for wanting to sell, targeting sixty six thirteen trend line, and, and if it can go fine. Uh, but if you're not in a, a trade for the Aussie dollar, I don't think there's any harm in not looking to get in one right now. Yes, we've got the first close above the the two hundred day moving average, but it's not significant enough, is how I would look at it. So just be slightly careful on that. If you are long, you've de risked. Where would I be looking to next? Well, you know, if we can get a nice clean push above here, some of these highs that we've got back from February 
uh, this year, most notably this kind of point around on the futures it comes in at 67.56. That's where I would be looking at uh, for for that market. I think if we do, you know, get a, a nice nice push through, worth potentially having on this this level starting um, 26th of Jan 2018 into the high that we had on or the high of the 31st of December just because there could be a third test of that trend line and then you know if you draw that up to come in this week it could well come in you know at the same sort of point as here um, but uh, yeah let's review that next Sunday just following the same sort of pattern as, as maybe the S&P has which has pushed on um, obviously I leave those support levels on uh, we'll just make this now even a more important zone with the low that we had on Friday and that previous top of the range 200 day moving average so the bears need it below 29.70 for um, that continuation lower to then get back towards that well our previous line in the sand 28.90 28.86 this level here um, where are we looking to find resistance obviously got the 31 hands we got this massive resistance level here as well um, which you know we, we spend a bit of time around you know after breaking through initially on the 26th of Feb that next move happened on the 5th of March lower so 31 14 you'd have people de-risking as we come up to that level especially 14 points below that uh, the handle uh, but that's going to be key that's going to be key this is where I think we have that next kind of push lower the rejection the way I see it is uh, there's going to be a rejection of this then one of the headlines just captures that negativity more than maybe it would on another day uh, and we push lower however that said a break this week above 31.14 you've got to be aware of this level here you can see we had the high on the 27th of Feb the low that we had on the 8th of Jan uh, 31.82 is something uh, where we're, we're going to have a resistance point uh, and also it's a big big area just a bit above that 32.13 the low from the 31st of Jan and the 24th of Feb. Uh, no point really getting these levels marked on just yet. Obviously, if we do have a unimaginable push higher, then just just be aware. You know, it doesn't take too long to, to mark those up. But yeah, I I, I would say 31.14 likely to cap the upside this week. However, daily closes, as we know, are key. Uh, and the downside for any real scary move for the bulls, we need it below. Uh, or they would need it below 29.95 the way we finished on Friday for the Nasdaq makes me think we get all time highs this week um, unless there's a big development in US and China so yeah what a, what a recovery uh, from, from that low uh, let's get the old currency tool from that lowest point just in case you want to feel sorry for yourself and missing out uh, a 44.5% move off those lows. In, in, insane. First close above our, our level we've marked up on there. Um, we haven't had a close after closing above 93.42, so we haven't closed below 93.42 since. So that's another level I, I would have marked on. My trend lines here, I would have them on for guides, but that's kind of the picture I would look at here for. For, for the NASDAQ, uh, so the next level to the upside, obviously you would potentially de-risk on the 26th of May high, but then you're looking at you know, the high of 21st and Feb, and then 97.56, bit of a trend line on there to, to work worthwhile having on, on those highs, maybe, maybe. Um, uh, without a headline, we, we, we're going to, to, to those highs. Um, Fed on the on the Wednesday could well be also the that 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 uh, that point that leads us to to a move lower. I can't quite off the top of my head remember the the last Fed uh, meeting, but uh, we did push lower off of that on both the S and P and um, I think it was the twelfth of May, wasn't it? You can see here twelfth we push lower twelfth. We push lower. It's a common theme, isn't it? You know, buying into a Fed meeting, selling as they under deliver. So, all time highs by Wednesday come off for the rest of the week. Yeah, maybe. And then a little recovery on non farm payrolls uh, after that. 
so therefore the Dow, you've got to imagine we, we can get up to test that, that previous low, 25.93.4. Uh, 25,934, uh, I was thinking there, um, how to say that correctly. Uh, it's been a long weekend in the sun. Um, but yeah, 200 day moving average, let's, let's, let's have that marked on because that's uh, you know what people are, are gonna look at. As we get to that point, also worth noting, you've got the, the high of the 6th of March. Uh, as, as If that is to break, then you have a, a bit of a cleaner move, I would say up to, to the high here on the 5th of March. So worth keeping an eye on. The bulls uh, are happy at the moment. They're very happy with how we finished on Friday. The bears need us below 24, 7, 6, 9. Uh, we've got our midpoint, we've got a lower range there. I, we kind of have it like that, to be honest. Um, uh, I think that's, that's that's pretty good. Where we finished on Friday was, was key. Let's have a quick look over at the, the month uh, on, on equities. Uh, let's just remove, actually I don't want to remove that because we can review that again next week. But just looking here, the fact that we, you know, closed above a few of these levels where we haven't uh, been, you know, since, well, obviously before, February you know, looks looks pretty good. Good little finish to Friday. Headlines uh, will be the only thing that stops equities and new headlines as well. Gold, um, it's gonna remove everything uh, as you know. You can see here on the future, you've got your double top, you've got your, your, your trend line break and then false break of, of that, which it turned out to be. However, it was a good move lower in that day. We're above it, we've then found support, pushed higher. Uh, it's a zone from 1742 to the low, uh, so 1744 up to this level, line in the sand, we need that below the trend line, 1715, yeah, that looks pretty good to me, just having these points marked up, uh, obviously those lows here, that's how I'd have, 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 have gold for me, nice finish on Friday to, to give us a, a bullish start on Monday, you would, you would say being uh, a close above here however are we just in a range and we're just above that midline um, I would say resistance 1742 if that doesn't hold 57 is in the next level uh, if we get back below the trend line likelihood it's just going to be a bit messy someone asked for the silver uh, which has been on obviously on a on a tear on a tear last month um, I, mean, I mean look at the recovery from 19th of March but yeah uh, the May, where's the first of May here? Ooh, big push, big push, big, big, big push higher. Uh, decent finish to Friday as well. Um, you, you'd imagine the double top from, from 2020, uh, make it a triple from September, the uh, end of September, looks like that's uh, on the horizon for, for silver. I would stay, if I am long, would be happily stay long as long as we're above 18, 19. Uh, you know, you can see the significance of that holding up. We're now back above there. I wouldn't get scared, you know, even if we do just drift down back into this level. And as long as you don't get a daily close below there, it does feel like this market gets up to those highs, certainly on the futures uh, of, of February uh, earlier this, this year. If I was bearish on, on silver, I mean, you could argue, you know, once we had you know failed here that could have been the opportunity to to get short i mean just looking at that but yeah it's uh, it got real messy around there cleaned out this range so that's now the the level of support that i would look to have on yeah i'd be pretty confident just looking at this that we we can continue to push higher not to say that 18 19 is going to hold to the tick uh but you feel like if that comes back down we get a uh, an area of support and we push on and yeah, up to, to that level and, and then maybe even 20 get start, get, starts getting talked about uh, on that. Oil, uh, yeah, I think we get $40. Uh, yes, 36.43 has to go for that. Uh, 29.11 has to go for, for this trade to be completely wrong. Good break. I still think 29.11 holds. Uh, just putting this onto the 2.40 minute, you can see, um, you know, the we are just sort of creeping up. We, hit this resistance point that we had from the 9th of April. Big level. Uh, to the downside, is there any trend lines that'd be worth having on? Doesn't look all that clean, to be honest. To be honest, for, for oil, I feel it's uh, it, it's it obviously got it's a mind of its own over the last, well, 2020, it's been on a hell of a journey, isn't it? 
Uh, but yeah, I think we get the gap fill. Uh, so that's your, your key level. Do I think that could happen in, in one day, 36s to 41s? No in oil, yeah. Um, I think there could be a decent short if we obviously break that sort of, call it a zone, but obviously below 29.25 and 29.97, dollars is how I would look. Uh, quick look at the, the DAX, just to wrap it up. You can see how we finished uh, on on Friday, just in the in the positive, um, it is a big resistance level up here, though. So it it wouldn't surprise me that actually, you know, we we can push lower from here. However, you know, my view on stocks is still risk on, so I wouldn't necessarily be selling into it. I'd more be looking to see how we would react if we come here, or what happens if we get the daily close above that level. But you can see just how important look at these lows are, uh, and then obviously if that does break then you could get a, a bigger move to that upside so it's it's one where I wouldn't be in a trade right now for the DAX uh, I, was, I, was in, I wouldn't look to get into one right now if I wasn't already in one um, just because of the, the significance of this level yes we close below one resistance two resistance three uh, levels three tests that failed to get us above there um, but uh, yeah it, it's obviously very key so uh, I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, bullish above. It's bearish now, but I don't really believe in in the risk risk uh, risk off coming off just yet. So you know, I'm gonna stay away from from a short. And you know, that's how I go about my trades. Is you know, fundamental view bias. When and when does that mark? When when does the the, the technicals agree with with that decision? So yeah, that's how I would look to go through that. Anyway, guys, a uh, bit of a long one today, 26 minutes to summon a, a quick look over, so I'll do the usual and uh, um, put the, the timestamps on. But obviously, if you're listening to this, you've probably already seen the timestamps anyway. Uh, but I hope you have all had a great weekend. I hope you continue to enjoy the rest of yours. I hope you all continue to, to stay safe, and I look forward to interacting with you guys in the comments section uh, and also seeing you all again next Sunday.